everyone has nightmares. But for actors, they can take a very different form because their worst nightmares happen when they are wide awake. And then I slid off the edge of the platform and ended in the lap of one of the patrons in the front row. <laughs> he takes the chicken costume head off. It makes his toupee stand straight up on his head. And I feel something crawl into my ear canal and go inside. Jesus went <laughs> up into the rafters where he arrived with a crash. What I've been saying in Vietnamese translates to my hurts when I don't look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Luann Moldovan, host of The Actor's Nightmare. Join us each week for real horror stories from the stage, told by the actors who actually lived through them. Sometimes terrifying, sometimes hard to believe, often very funny. And every actor who has been around long enough has at least one nightmare story from the stage that made them think, it's time to get a real job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luann Moldovan, and welcome to The Actor's Nightmare. We have a great story today, but before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsors who have been so supportive of the show. First, a big shout out to Artists Repertory Theater, Portland's premier regional theater company, producing intimate, provocative shows that provide a home for a diverse community of artists where they can thrive and take risks. Check out their 2019-2020 season at www.artistsrep.org. Also, thanks so much to our patrons, Bob Conklin, and to Len and Susan Magazine and their company, Real Estats, providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. Check them out at www.realestats.net. And of course, we are so grateful for the studio at North Rim, where we record our podcast. If you want to do a show, check them out at studioatnorthrim.com. All right, so today we have in the studio Duffy Epstein, a veteran actor in Portland who I've seen and enjoyed in many productions. I think you even doing something coming up, I know, that may we say? I've got a few projects. On oh, yes, somewhere. it's that. It's a few projects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, today you are going to tell us about a show that you did. Was it for Portland Rep? No, actually, this was um, <clears throat> for a little theater up in Ellensburg, Washington. Right. How did that happen that you were up there? What they were doing was a production of Oleana mm -hmm. by David Mamet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all about a college professor. So they thought this would be kind of a neat idea to do for their theater appreciation class. Ah, okay. So it, they had kind of this weird thing where they would, I had to memorize the entire script, and then I went up and I had two rehearsals with an, with a student, a, wow. an actress. It's a two-hander. Yeah. Um, and we'd get two rehearsals and then one performance. That's it. Yeah. Oh, for the class. For the class. And was the... The young woman in the play, was she a student? or She, she was, was a student. At the, so it was okay. kind of a thing like, oh, we're going to bring in a quote-unquote professional actor, yeah. and a student's going to get gotcha. to, to work on this, and they've already learned their stuff. They're going to block it quick, do whatever they can in two days. And So I did that twice, and over like six months. <clears throat> and then they decided, hey, we want to do a short run oh, of okay. this. So this was 94. Well, um, right before that, in the spring of 94, I was lucky enough to go with Artist Repertory Theater. And they had uh, Alan Noss was connected with this guy with the United States Information Agency, the mm -hmm. USIA. And we were like cultural ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So we would, <clears throat> Alan had done this before, and this was a trip where we were going to you know, Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Syria, Damascus, Jordan, Egypt, you know, Kenya, wow. all of these 10 weeks. And what were you doing? <clears throat> what shows? We were doing um, two different shows. We were doing um, Edward Albee's Three Tall Women, mm -hmm. which the Edward Albee, uh, his agent or his manager, you know, they have casting. Oh, yeah. He had they to vetoed prove. me. Oh. I was too tall. So they wouldn't let me do the part. Wait, are you joking? I'm not kidding. 
No, wait, what part? <clears throat> of the son who comes in in the last 15 minutes oh. of the play and sits in a chair with his back <gasps> to the audience. They would not, they said, nope, he's too tall. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> wow. That was the second time I'd been cut out of an Edward Albee play, and I what? would like to think that the last name Epstein had very little oh, to do with it. That's, but that's Duffy. my own. Oh. Anyway, but that's, that's beside mm -hmm. them. So we go on this trip. We're, and, and we did a thing called Journey Through American Comedy, where we did things that we thought were funny to Americans. Would they like, you know, some Marx Brothers, uh -huh. some Neil Simon. It was kind of like, this is what Americans, you know, think is funny. And you guys didn't put this together. <clears throat> that was a prepared... Yeah, we just took scenes. Okay. You know, we put them together and we chose the scenes you ourselves. Did. Okay. But, so we go over there and it's 10 weeks of just fantastical bliss i mean wow. we're traveling we're seeing all of these things it was a great group of people and during that time you know i was thinking about this i look back on that time as i was probably 35 years old maybe 36 mm -hmm. and i just felt i never felt stronger in um artistically um <clears throat> personally even physically mm -hmm. not brute strength just just like I can do all of the stuff yeah. and I'm enjoying myself and I'm being fed and I just remember f almost feel I look back and I go god I was like I peaked yeah I was like yeah. peaking during top that of time. your form yeah and so it was fantastic um I never got sick on the trip wow other people got oh, some sure. people they got pretty sick yeah because you know you're eating different foods oh, and yeah. you know drinking the water mistakenly. So mm -hmm. we come back and like two weeks later, I go up to Ellensburg and I'm doing this, I'm doing Oleana. Mm -hmm. So I go up there and we're rehearsing. It's a new actress and- um, Also a student? Yeah, and she's young and she's, I, I mean, I'm just looking back now, yeah. I can do it sort of being judgmental. It's like, she really wasn't very good. Yeah, yeah. She's kind of <laughs> stiff and wooden, but it, that wasn't the point. It really didn't matter. She was very sweet and mm -hmm. we had a great time. And I got sick during the rehearsals and I just like uncontrollably sick. I, I could not stop. Was and this I like delayed up, reaction to I your no travels? Idea. Like, I can't stop vomiting. Whoa. I'm dehydrated. I go to the emergency room. They hook me up with the IV and they're running, I don't know, and they're like going, I, I don't know, um, you're sick? I'm like, yeah. And so they give me some, um, I think it was compazine, some anti-nausea. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, you know, and a couple days later, I'm feeling better. So, um, and, and actually to tell you the truth, one of the days I was sick, I missed opening night of this because what? I'm in the emergency room. What did they do? Did they have a... They canceled it. Yeah. The next night, I'm, I'm feeling okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on. And here's, here's where the fun part starts. So <laughs> this play, Oleana, is for the first two acts, the character John, who's the professor... He never fucking shuts up. I mean, <laughs> he is talking the entire time, either on the phone. Oh, God. He's pontificating. He's using big words. The the young woman, she's playing a, you know, the student who's playing a student. Yeah. She, she says like four words, <laughs> you know, for the first two acts. Oh, God. And so, do the first act. It's moving right along. Sold out, you know, mm. I don't know, a couple hundred people. Mm. <clears throat> and there's a quick blackout. We go backstage, and there's like a minute between the next scene, and we have got costume change. And I'm like noticing that my jaws, it's a little tight. And I'm like, yeah, I must have some tension. I must be clenching. I mm -hmm. must be holding my jaw. I'm going to just sort of make a mental note of that. And go back on stage, do the second act. And now I'm starting to get like little twinges in my, I think it's called your masseter muscle, you mm. know, right there on mm -hmm. your cheek. And I, I'm starting to twinge and I'm like, wow, I, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. So I'm, I'm like on stage taking opportunity. I'm kind of, hmm, I'm thinking, hmm, but I'm rubbing my, <laughs> oh my jaw God. and I'm just kind of trying to, trying to kind of keep it loose. That scene's over. We go backstage, getting dressed, you know, changing. And, and the actress goes, are, 
are you okay? Oh, God, she noticed. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I, just, I just got some tension in my jaw. She goes, yeah, I, I see you rubbing it. I'm like, oh. yeah, it's, it's, it's fine, don't worry about it. We go out there, we and start... And he's talky, it through, talk, got a lot talk, of talk, talk for you. Talk, talk, okay. talk, The guy just will not <laughs> shut up, you know? And start the third act. Talk, 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 talk. And now I'm like, oh, shit, these twinges are... They're, they're, I, I, I'm thinking they're visible. Like the audience can Jeez. see, like, you know, oh until I kind of go like this. I am literally, I am turning up stage mm. between, I'm doing this. Between sentences. Between talking, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, you say something. You know? <laughs> so I, I, I'm doing this, and I, I'm talking, I'm talking, and all of a sudden, I get kind of like this, like a quarter smile on my face. And my mouth is kind of stuck like that. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. What? And I'm, I'm doing this and I talk, talk. Pretty soon. Oh. I face is stuck like oh. this. God. It won't move. Uh. And I'm thinking, <gasps> what, what do I do? Right. I mean, nothing no. is helping. And so finally, I'm like, I'm thinking, I must look like the fucking Joker, right? Oh. And so I... I just make that decision that, and I go, well, this, this can't go on. Yeah. And I, even though I didn't need to, I like, like I take a step back from where I'm standing mm -hmm. as if I'm stepping out of character now. Yes. Here I'm John, <laughs> but here I'm Duffy and everybody <laughs> must know that. <laughs> and I just kind of look up sort of, sort of this crowd and I go, I'm really sorry, Lord, I can't go on. Ah. <sighs> and I turn around and I, Always remember this. And like I say, she was very sweet. But I, I just say, I'm oh, really sorry, I can't go on. And I, I catch her, and she's looking at me, and I remember thinking, that's the most honest look she's given me. Oh, in the whole <laughs> in the During the whole thing. Like, that's real. <laughs> so I go backstage, and I sit down, and I immediately start shivering. Oh I mean, God. uncontrollably, I cannot stop shivering. And she comes back, and the stage manager comes back, and they're like, what? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. And all of a sudden, I look up, and this guy says, Duffy? And I look up. It's the doctor from the emergency room. Was in the audience? Was in the audience that night. Oh, my God. And he's <laughs> like, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> And he's going, we're going back to the hospital right now. And... I wish, I wish I could say, yep, I had malaria, and I got... They had no idea. What? They're like, you are sick with something, and we have no idea what it is. It's some bug that obviously you picked up in your travels. Yeah. And they, I, it never came back. I, I performed the next you night. Did, what did they do? To, how did they help you that night? How did you get your <laughs> jaw back? I think... I think the shivering uh -huh. had nothing to do, because when he saw me shivering, he's like, you know, we never did a malaria test, and I think we should do a malaria test. And I'd taken the pills and stuff along the way, but they never found out what it was. But what, how, what did they do to help you that night? How did you get better? It just... It just went of, away? Yeah. It worked itself out? I think they probably gave me some other antibiotics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I honestly, you'd think I'd remember that part <laughs> of it. I don't. All I remember was being up there going, oh my literally, God, this is a nightmare. Well, I wasn't breathing for part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got better, Duffy. Thank you. And live to tell the tale. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. being here. Absolutely. This is great. Thanks so much for tuning into The Actor's Nightmare. We hope you enjoy listening to the podcast as much as we do producing it. And remember to subscribe to The Actor's Nightmare podcast. You can go to our website at www.actorsnightmarepodcast.com Choose subscribe and then choose the platform that you like to use to listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and support the show by liking us on Facebook. And again, I want to thank our sponsors, Artist Repertory Theatre, Portland's premier regional theatre company, producing intimate, provocative shows that provide a home for a diverse community of artists where they can thrive and take risks. And to Bob Conklin, an ardent sponsor of all things theatrical here in Portland. And finally, to Realistats, 
providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. This is Luann Moldovan. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on The Actor's Nightmare. <laughs>